The first step of removing this uh, stereo bezel and trim is to remove the speaker uh, cover right here. Now these are in here very tight. It feels like you're gonna break it. And hopefully you don't. <laughs> Next time I would've used this. A bigger pry tool helps with those. Anyway, there are two screws in the front here, seven millimeter. Once the two seven millimeter head screws are removed, you start prying this up. I'm gonna to try to get my tool in here to help. There it goes. You can see the three pins in there that hold it in place. With that removed, you'll see two more seven millimeter head screws. Those removed, this front face here should come right off. Obviously there's a lot of connectors, so we're going to disconnect those one by one. Alright, now with the bezel out of the, out of the way, I'll show you exactly where you need to press to get these tabs to release because they look unlike almost any other connector on the truck. It's right here. These are for the top buttons. Right up there on the top. And on the bottom one here, uh, this big one on the left, now I have an XLT, different trims may be different. It's on the bottom. So the way it sits in there is like this. Now, they give you this little pry, prying little area here. I was able to get it in by hand and wiggle it out that way. This guy here, same thing, is also in there very tight. Button is on the bottom, kind of wiggle it out. I have two more seven millimeter head screws right here. All right, to get this guy off here, the shifter trim, we want to get in here right between just under the silver part there. There's a pin that will pop it up. Do the same to the other side. There it goes. And I just want to take this thing and work it up. Now next, there are two pins that go forward. So we want to just grab it and work it back and forth. Hopefully it didn't break anything. It always sounds like it break something. And I've got my parker, my shifter in park. I think we're going to cut the video and put it in neutral to make it easier. All right, with the trim piece off, these are T20 Torx bit screws. We don't want to drop them down there, so we take nice and easy. Is that it? I think that's it, just those two. And the edges here actually have these pins. You can almost see them from the side there. There is some wiring back here. This is going to be for the shifter light. I'm going to disconnect that so we don't rip it out. Hopefully we'll just be able to push this thing forward enough so we can access the wiring that we're going to play with down there. All right, you'll see these little push pins here. I got the rest of that piece out of the way so I can work a little easier. Um, it looks like I'm also going to have to Move this guy here, a couple more T20s. So I can start fishing the wire over to the clock spring on the steering wheel.
All right, now I think the most difficult part of this install is getting the wire for your harness uh, back under this section here into the steering column. Now, they say that there's a hole against the back wall under this way that you could fish the wire through. Now, to save my life, I could not do it. Now, I elected to start pulling this part out, which I almost had out, and my wife, with her smaller hands, was able to put both her hands on both sides and is able to feed the wire through. So, thank God for her. Now, it is easier, and I think it is a must, to have this sliding tray come out. The only thing that's keeping it from coming out after these two torque screws is this switch here. Now the switch is not, it's not disconnected or anything. It actually kind of pops into place. You'll see it, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you just kind of pull that up out of place. Uh, so now I've got the wire fished through this side. I will, con I will uh, actually start to plug it into the shifter here. So this is our harness, right? So all we're doing is plugging this harness in, in line, basically between these connectors here so we could tap into it now it is recommended that you basically move these giant connectors over to the cup holder side so that they don't interfere with the mechanics of the shifter here so to do that start by disconnecting the shifter here which you're not going to see because my hands in the way now I'm going to pull this guy down through the slot Now, I'm gonna have to simply move the shifter a little bit, I'll undo these bolts, and it'll open up that hole a little bit more. All right, I removed the four 10 millimeter head bolts that hold the shifter in place so that it allows uh, a bigger access hole here for this harness. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and again pull that through. Evidently, the wire for the light's gonna come with me. So, again, how this works is the harness that you get from Boosted Gray Goose it basically just goes in line here. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to plug this in in here and fish this guy back in there. Be sure to bring the light for the shifter indicator with me. And again, because I have this loose, it's a little easier to feed it up in there. This side here we don't want this thing rattling around all willy-nilly like so we're going to zip tie it up to probably the bottom of this here it should be out of the way pull more of this slack through probably should have routed that under there we can still do that we'll come right back and we'll have it fixed Check it out. So I got the wire running under this support bracket here so that my cup holder doesn't hit it. Um, now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to zip tie the connector here. So I'm getting kind of rattling if I'm off-roading with this connector. Probably zip tie it just like that to this guy here. All right, so you did miss the part where I took this off. Um, well, in order to get this off, you first have to remove this knee panel here so it actually is just put in by these push pins so you have to just pry it right out and it actually hinges right down once you have that down there you'll notice three screws in the bottom here i think there are five uh, five and a half millimeter head screws um, and then you could finagle the, uh, the bottom steering column cover off um, but i've already done that next I have the wire for the harness still over there by the CD player, so I'm going to find my way um, under the dash this way. I'll probably remove this here, which is uh, 10 millimeter. I'll remove this so I can reach my hand in there, 
and feed the wire back out this way and it will ultimately be going to the top of this Duren column. I've got my cable here. Um, I'm going to zip tie it here to this guy. I'm gonna have it run over to the OBD2 port and I'm gonna actually have it parallel the OE harness up this way. That way I know it's not gonna get caught or pinched on anything because um, we just need to get up to this point here. I'll try to grab as much slack as possible from the center console. All right, I figured out I haven't permanently attached my, my harness yet, but I figured out where I'm gonna put it. Um, before I get any further, I wanna make sure it fits into the connector that we're working with. Um, now the way that this guy works uh, from the harness, from the uh, boosted gray goose, you have, they're numbered here, right? So you got 10, 11, and number nine, and they just match up with the corresponding holes here on this connector plug. Now, you may not see it in the video here, but if you look very closely in the corners here, so that's the number six, that's a 12, that's a one, that's a seven. So I have one through six, seven through 12. So I will just match these up with the corresponding holes there. Um, in order to get them to go in there, we are first going to have to release this tab here. So my nails are long enough, I could push this guy down just a little bit here. And this will allow me to, there we go, you see I've just snapped out. This will allow me to push these pins in there and then that will lock it back into place. So, again, like I said, that's a number seven. So that means that must be number eight. Nine must go right there. Number nine is this pink one. Now, they only go in one way. And we'll know which way they go in when they go in. Ooh, that, now that one actually clicked. That means I had it in all the way. Let me get this pink one. This pink one might be a pain in the ass. Maybe it did click, but I didn't hear it. Try this last one here. That one clicked as well. Now I'm not so certain, certain the nine is, actually the nine doesn't want to come out. So I'm gonna assume that's in there. I'm gonna hope it's in there. Um, Looks like it matches up the other ones. Like, look, push this back so it locks them in. So it looks like it's in there. They don't want to come out. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in. Before I put anything back, uh, this plug, if you didn't see it, goes right back in there into the back side of the clock spring. And the release tab is right there on top. There it goes back in there, it's locked into place. Now, before I put everything back together, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start up the truck, make sure everything works okay, and go from there. Everything's loose, including my shifter. Of course, it's freaking out, the door's open. Now, I can tell my up shift is working because it's bringing up the shift pattern. Put down the manual, shift in the second. Now, my downshifting is not working. See, if I pull the downshift, that's on the trigger, right? So that's how it should work. But my paddle's not working, so maybe that pink wire didn't go in all the way as I was hoping for. So I'll go ahead and uh, try that out. All right, when I came over to the plug here, I pulled this cover completely off. And now I've since fixed it, but I could see that my pink wire, the number nine, wasn't even showing up there. It was way, way back. So obviously I wasn't getting a good connection. So when you push these in all the way, make sure they all look pretty even. And then we'll put this guy back on, to lock him in. All right, I got the key on. I'm not gonna start this time. Put in the drive, pull the up paddle, down paddle. Second, first, all right, well now it's working. I'll go ahead and start it up. So I'm gonna drive, lock out the top gears, bring them back up. Uh, that's a success. We'll button this thing back up, go for a test drive. 